Being in a position to deliver a speech to an entire public is a great honor. Being in a position to give a speech that's going to deliver bad news is not such an honor. Throughout history, very disturbing speeches have evaded the world's attention, but still came out in one way or another. Number 5. Ted Turner's Doomsday Tape This is not an everyday video, one that should specifically be played only at the end of the world. If you ever find yourself watching the apocalypse live on CNN, the last thing you see will emphatically not be in 4K resolution. Standard definition, perfect for the cathode ray tube televisions of the 1980s. The Turner Doomsday video is found on CNN's Mira archive system. The video leaked online when a former intern at the network posted it on Gawker's media Jalopnik blog on the 5th of January 2015. Ted Turner, a billionaire founder of CNN, known for his wealth and media legacy, had called for a preparation of a video to be played by the last surviving employee before succumbing to radiation poisoning, the plague, zombies, or whatever crazy end Turner saw coming. Rumors of the Doomsday Tape's existence have circulated for decades, boosted by Turner's own words in June of 1980 when he said, We are going to go on air on June first, and we're going to stay on until the end of the world. According to Turner, when that time comes, the video would be played by the last surviving employee, play Near My God to Thee, the song the band played when the Titanic went down, and then sign off. According to Mike Balaban, the then CNN intern who supposedly leaked the video, it's found in the CNN's intranet video database, reminding whoever accesses it that there's a grave restriction, HFR, or hold for release, until the end of the world is confirmed. That leaves open a number of unanswered questions. If this is the last CNN employee alive, in the last CNN bureau on Earth, who are they to find the authority from to confirm it with? What does that confirmation entail? Who can be the one to make the call, to pronounce the universe itself dead and ended? CNN did not reply to requests for comments at the time the video was leaked, but the details seem to corroborate it was actually made for broadcast during an apocalyptic event such as a nuclear holocaust, a very real threat in June of 1980. Number 4. John F. Kennedy's Airstrike Speech The John F. Kennedy airstrike speech was to be delivered in the event that the White House ordered airstrikes against Soviet missile sites on Cuba. The speech, written for U.S. President John F. Kennedy, that the people of the world thankfully never had to hear, begins, My fellow Americans, with a heavy heart I have ordered, and the United States Air Force have now carried out, military operations to remove a major nuclear weapons buildup from the soil of Cuba. Such a use of force would undoubtedly have led to an all-out war between NATO and the Warsaw Pact. To mark the 50th anniversary of the historic event in 2012, Boston's John F. Kennedy Presidential Library and Museum brought to light the only known copy of the undelivered speech. It was released with a trove of nearly 3,000 pages of other documents from the period that were compiled by the president's younger brother, Attorney General Robert F. Kennedy. The very surprising revelation set off a tense game of brinksmanship that propelled the world to the threshold of an armed conflict, one that certainly would have led to nuclear Armageddon. Although thousands of Soviet military personnel were on the ground in Cuba, planting as many as 75 missile sites and air defense batteries, it would still take some time, say weeks, for the launchers to become operational. As the Oval Office insiders weighed America's options, warplanes massed in Florida for airstrikes that would be followed by a marine ground invasion of Cuba. With tensions approaching the breaking point, Kennedy's national security advisor, George Bundy, drafted a speech that his boss would deliver live on TV immediately after the air campaign had been unleashed. 
However, the 35-year-old wordsmith was supposedly unable to bring himself to compose a narration that would likely have ushered in World War III. The draft of the document remained top secret for years. Mr. Reed Pauley, a research assistant to Stanford professor Scott Sagan, went through the laborious effort of extracting the speech from a 166-page collection. It can be downloaded in PDF from the internet. Kennedy finally went for a naval blockade of the island nation, which the White House characterized as a quarantine so as to avoid provoking Kremlin. The warship screen prevented communist vessels from transporting more missiles to Cuba, while a marathon round of secret diplomacy between Washington and Moscow hammered out a settlement before the Soviet missiles were activated. The secret deal saw Russia withdraw warheads in exchange for a pledge by Washington to pull its nuclear missiles from Turkey. The resolution has largely been seen as a Cold War victory for President Kennedy. Number 3. President Nixon's Speech If Apollo 11 Had Failed the NASA Apollo 11 moon landing captivated the entire world, but at the time, the mission's success was far from certain. President Richard Nixon had a speech ready should Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin meet their ends on the moon. The triumphant success therefore came as a great relief to President Nixon. He didn't have to deliver the speech entitled, An Event of Moon Disaster. Stored in the National Archives, Nixon's speech first surfaced around the 30th anniversary of the lunar landing. In an autobiography by Wei Liam Sapphire, before the fall, an inside view of the pre-Watergate White House, he writes how NASA and the Apollo 8 astronaut Frank Borman contacted him a month before the lunar landing to suggest preparing for shortcomings. Borman supposedly said that an alternative position for the president was to be put into consideration in the event of setbacks on Apollo 11, such as what to do for the widows. As a result, a speech and memo were prepared in the event that the two astronauts did not manage to reconnect with their command module piloted by Michael Collins and could not return safely to Earth. The tragic situation would first require President Nixon to contact the widows to express his condolences before addressing the nation in the prepared speech. The closing words of the speech reflected British poet Rupert Brooks' words on World War I, last respect to the fallen whose bodies were left on foreign soil. As the speech mourned the lost astronauts, it also spoke to the idea that others would follow in their footsteps, visiting the lunar surface and returning home safely to Earth. Public communications would then be closed down and the clergymen would commend the astronauts' souls to the deep, much like a naval burial at sea. This speech is also available on the internet. Number two. Queen's speech if World War III broke. The civil servants prepared a speech to deliver at the outbreak of World War III at the height of the Cold War in the Whitehall corridors between the nuclear-armed Soviet Union and the West. The Queen's words are full of warmth, hope, and comfort, but fortunately for history, she never had to say them. The speech pictures and illustrates a world on the brink of nuclear destruction, and she blames it on the deadly power of abuse technology, and mentions her beloved son Andrew on the front line. However, she has her country behind her, stating in the planned broadcast, whatever terrors lie in wait for us all, the qualities that have helped to keep our freedom intact twice already during this sad century will once more be our strength. This very moving speech is among the secret cabinet files released by the National Archives in 2013, and was written by an imaginative speechwriter taking part in a disaster planning exercise. The Cabinet Wintex Simex 83 Committee Exercise, a disaster planning meeting, was held in the spring of 1983 against a backdrop of aggravating U.S.-Russian relations and revenge battles on each side. It was the year that U.S. President Ronald Reagan related the Soviets to an evil empire, deployed medium-range nuclear missiles to Europe, and began the Star Wars project. A NATO military exercise dubbed Able Archer virtually led to a full-blown war when the Soviet Union became convinced it was an intended attack. The Queen's speech was planned to be taken live at noon on Friday, March 4th, 1983. It is available online. Number 1. Doomsday Blueprints the Doomsday Blueprints were plans developed during Eisenhower's presidency. The sole mission was to ensure the safety of the federal government, preserve law and order, and support the growth of the devastated economy in the event that America suffered a nuclear attack. The Doomsday planners worked towards creating an extensive and secret Doomsday bureaucracy to achieve the mission. In Time Magazine's August 10, 1992 issue, Ted Gupp outlined details on newly secret plans that the federal government had developed for recouping the state in the event of a nuclear attack on the United States by the Soviet Union. Estimation was passed that tens of millions of Americans would succumb to the attacks, with the major cities of the United States ruined and some in ashes. 
Besides millions of civilian casualties, there would be another, more imminent casualty. The dissimulation of constitutional government. The secret bureaucracy that planned the doomsday blueprints did not just stop at the theory level. They made plans and built a large network of relocation sites for federal government officials and a ring around the capital that they codenamed the Federal Ark. True leadership entails putting the interests of the subjects first. Does sacrificing human liberty at the cost of state power define true leadership? Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, be sure to hit that like button. Also, be sure to subscribe and check out our channel for all of our future videos.